During World War II, the German army deployed active infrared night vision devices on the battlefield and achieved experimental success. However, this technology did not become widespread until the 1950s and 1960s when the reliability and performance of the equipment gradually improved. However, active infrared night vision devices themselves also had some unavoidable issues. In order to obtain night vision capabilities, it was necessary to use an infrared illuminator to illuminate the target area in order to form a stable image. This operation was not a problem during World War II because the enemy did not have night vision devices. However, it became a major problem after the war. If both sides on the battlefield were equipped with similar devices, when our side turned on the infrared light, it inadvertently illuminated the enemy's field of view, making ourselves an easy target. This was especially true for tanks with lower power, as they appeared like lit lanterns moving on the battlefield. To solve this problem, the Soviet Union proposed a solution in the late 1950s, which was to equip the troops with dedicated self-propelled infrared searchlights. These searchlights needed to have powerful output, capable of illuminating a wide and far enough area. Because they were deployed behind our own troops, they could avoid directly affecting our imaging devices, while enemy devices directly illuminated by high-power infrared lights would be blinded. Initially, the plan was to develop the 686 project, intending to retrofit existing chassis. Later, the self-propelled Searchlight 117 project replaced it, which was modified based on the SU-100P chassis. The chassis structure remained largely unchanged, using a 400-horsepower diesel engine for power. The engine and gearbox were installed at the front of the vehicle. Originally, the SU-100P used a compact cooling system and gearbox. However, due to the need to power the searchlight and other equipment, the designer had to modify the output shaft and add an additional output port to connect to a generator, driving a 22 k of generator. The suspension system remained the same, with six pairs of torsion bar suspension bogies and three pairs of support rollers. Hydraulic shock absorbers were installed on the front and rear pairs of bogies. The searchlight equipment was installed at the rear of the vehicle. A TP-15-1 searchlight was mounted on a U-shaped support frame which could rotate horizontally. The searchlight could complete pitch adjustment on the support frame. In working mode, the lamp could swing between 15 de ground to 90 de grounds, so the lamp could also be used as an anti-aircraft searchlight. The TP-15-1 used arc lamps and incandescent lamps with a reflector diameter of 1.5 meters. Additional infrared filters could be installed on the searchlight. Without using the filters, it could illuminate an area 3,500 meters away and 600 meters wide. When the vehicle was in motion, the lamp needed to be folded down 90 degree to provide protection. It was claimed that the lampshade had a certain bulletproof capability. The overall vehicle armor was not thick, using welded steel armor. The front armor was the thickest at 18 millimeters, while other parts had a thickness of 8 millimeters, capable of withstanding damage from light weapons and shell fragments. Besides the headlights, there were no standard auxiliary weapons on the vehicle, and the crew needed to bring their own light weapons for self-defense. The TP-15-1 searchlight did not perform well in testing, not because of the brightness or insufficient illumination distance of the lamp, but because its light intensity was achieved by rapidly consuming electrodes, resulting in the need for the crew to frequently replace the electrodes outside the vehicle. The second issue was that the searchlight was positioned too low. During testing, it was found that it was difficult to effectively illuminate the ground when the lamp was raised more than 15 degrees. Additionally, due to the low illumination angle and high light intensity, when it illuminated buildings or other obstacles, a long black shadow would be cast behind them. Lastly, the lamp emitted a very strong heat. The lamp itself had a cooling system, but even so, the front of the vehicle was still hot. Within a few meters, the grass would dry up in a few hours. It was said that placing a raw chicken in front of the lamp glass would only take 15 to 20 minutes to cook it. It seemed to be a perfect barbecue tool. However, 
Could the crew inside the vehicle withstand such high temperatures? Originally, the weight of the searchlight and other equipment was similar to the weight of the Su-100P's gun, so theoretically both vehicles had the same mobility. However, because the TP-15-1 searchlight could not withstand bumps, the vehicle was actually unable to maneuver quickly off-road. Due to various reasons, the 117 project was considered unsuitable equipment, and one of the two prototype vehicles was preserved. The 117 project weighed about 20 tons, with a length of 6.5 meters, width of 3.1 meters, and height of 3 meters. Its maximum highway speed was 60 to 65 kilometers per hour, with a maximum range of 300 kilometers.